Welcome back. Last man in episode number 95. We've got a guest with us today because Dan's out um, celebrating after wrestling. He went out and got belligerent. And now uh, he's doing an alleged scouting report again. Him and his goddamn scouting report. I, he's blowing the budget. I think what it is is he's nursing a hangover. I think that's the problem. And a hangover. A hangover. It's 11 o'clock at night on I know, a Saturday. I know. Nursing in a hangover because he went or, or he's just really drunk and passed he's out. He's drunk, if anything. Yeah. He was belligerent today. We had to really reel him in. He was out of control. Yeah. So the man to my... Wait, as I put my hands up. Camera to my right. right. To my right. right. To my right okay. is our guest, Kevin, who is also a Pittsburgh Penguin fan. That I and, am. And the reason why we have him on is uh, something we'll divulge uh, just a little bit later in the podcast. Well, yeah, because they don't know already. Because, yeah, you guys, <laughs> you guys don't know that Pittsburgh's already there. They didn't do the math yet. <laughs> well, we are your source That'd for all hilarious. information. What if someone came across this and they were like, I'm going to listen to a new sports podcast, and they like... Our PVR aren't all of the playoffs. Summer, like, no! <laughs> well, what? too bad. <laughs> Cats out of the bag. All right, so lots to talk about today, obviously. Uh, Stanley Cup finals are set. San Jose and Pittsburgh. We'll talk about how they got there. A couple of interesting things about both Tampa Bay, Pittsburgh, as well as um, San Jose. And that's my dog barking in the background. We also have, every one of us have field correspondence. We do. Way. All of we us. do, and my dog will be barking probably the entire time because she hates when people <laughs> that she does not know are here. So she knows okay. it's okay. She, she we we'll deal with it. It takes exactly. Exactly. couple haters. Um, couple haters. <laughs> yep. See, that's a wrestling <laughs> reference that Greg will not understand. I do not understand. Yeah, I wish uh, there was a picture of what I look like right now. By the way, so we'll also talk about uh, World Cup rosters as they were fully announced, all the entire teams. And uh, last but certainly not least, we'll talk about a trade. In the NFL, that happens, oh and uh, obviously have to touch on the Memorial Cup as well. But uh, yeah, so things uh, happened <laughs> with the Vancouver Canucks. But we'll we'll get we to that start, later. Like, just nope. jump, no, jump we're not right starting in. there. We're no, not no, starting no. There. Yeah, we're we gonna jump into the Cup final. Cup final. Let's start in the West. San Jose, St. Louis, Game Six on Wednesday night. On the line was San Jose's first chance to go to a Stanley Cup final ever. On the other side, St. Louis was trying to stave off elimination and trying to solidify their chances to get into the cup final. So, did you guys watch this game by chance? I did. It was rough because St. Louis is playing, and you guys all know how I feel about St. Louis. It's like watching goddamn heat dry, and I'm glad I will at least get to watch a cup final because the Blues were in it. I wasn't watching. Unless a draw show was in it. Then of course they're not. not. They're boring. They're oh, not stop. even that bad. Don't stop a chase. Yeah, no wonder That's they suck. hockey camp. No, it's not. It's boring. All they do, they have one scorer, goddamn Tarasenko. They're like, here's seven million, do- seven and a half million, because no one else can put the puck in there. He actually shot. showed up in that game. Yeah, so one million. Yeah, bravo, bravo, proud of you, Tarasenko, idiot. God. Actually, uh, that was the one thing I was going to mention was the fact that Tarasenko did not show up in any of the previous six games. He had no and then points, he, sh- he showed no up for points, five minutes. Actually, no not points even that game. Five minutes. He showed up for no points scoring in games. I guess, I guess it was one that matters, but a little too little too late there, bud. Yeah, and Kevin's also a St. Louis fan, so you had two dogs in the fight here because you had Pittsburgh on one side, St. Louis on the other. It was setting up to be a great final for me, but obviously it didn't end so well. Oh, I'm so happy it didn't end that way. Oh, God. <laughs> so, obviously, we have to talk about both San Jose being their first cup ever, Joe Thornton and Patrick Marlow finally getting there, but first and foremost, St. Louis, where do they go from here? What David Backus, unrestricted free agent at the end of the year, what does St. Louis need to do to get over that hump? Did they run into a hot team? Did they were they not good enough? What's the problem there? I think they ran in like San Jose. I'd never expect them to make it this far. I don't know if you guys did. I think Cam did actually somehow. I but only I, I actually picked here. San Jose to go to the cup final. I had them here as well. Okay, well I did not. And okay, but the only reason I had them seriously was like this for me this year, I'm like, if they don't do it now, it is you gotta sh- go to the ball bearings, like strip it. It's done with. And so that's why I had, I my guess was that, like, I picked the Sharks just solely to, like, end the Cinderella and move on to the next team. Another Cinderella. And it's not going to be Blues next year. I hope it's never, ever. <laughs> Awful. What if the Blues had, like, played more interesting hockey? They don't. Would, and would they you, never Would will. you like them to play no. more interesting hockey? No. What's so no. bad about their hockey? I don't I mean, like, do I. I'm pretty I, I sure it's just the city of St. Louis, but it's mainly because of the Blues. I just Are don't you a car- like Do you like the Cardinals? No, I don't like the Cardinals. I'm a ch- 
I'm literally holding a San Francisco Giants water bottle. Why would I cheer for the Cardinals? Just, no, but the Cardinals are a better team. team. No, they're not. Yeah, and they it are. was proven year after year when they beat them in the American League or in the National well, Wow, League shows League. you how much you know about this. I know. I'm not a fan at all. No, not at, all. not at all. So San Jose, Joe Thornton, Patrick Marlowe, first cups ever for them. Is this run more for Joe and Patrick over being, you know, something about the storylines of Joe Pavelski, uh, Brent Burns, as well as Ta- uh, Thomas Harrell, no, uh, Logan Couture being top three in scoring in the playoffs. Is it more for the older players, or is this a run of the entire team? Well, I'm really happy Marlowe's made it. He's been at the team, like, almost two decades. Well, I got a stat here. Patrick Marlowe, 1,411 regular season games. Joe Thornton, 1,367 regular season games. First Stanley Cup final for both of them. Yeah. Like that. that they were sucks. drafted one, two. <laughs> yeah, that is brutal. That Dude, sucks. There's one guy who had it longer. I'll see if I can pull I'm up. I'm going to say Matt Sundin is in that list. Okay, coming into tonight, the Sharks' two big vets were tops on this list, but now no longer. Uh, finally in the finals, most playoff games played with no cup final appearance. Marlowe had 164 playoff games. Right, I remember that. Thornton, 149. Who is now number one on that list because he made it? It's well, I know Matt Sundin is somewhere on the it list. It is also a leaf, though. It's a leaf. <sighs> surprising. I did not. Surprising? I actually didn't know this until I didn't actually read this until just now. I just. Ah, uh, I don't know. Do you have a guess? I remember, I remember seeing it, but I I don't remember. Curtis Joseph. Curtis Joseph. Uh, One hundred and thirty-three yeah. games played without ever making it to. Well, a that that line. might spell more about how bad he was. He didn't make it with uh, Detroit. Nope. No, nope. no, not as a finalist. No. Oh, here's another weird one about just Hitchcock. Hitchcock, 2012, lost in the second round. 2013, first round. 14, first round. 15, first round. 2016, third round. And now you had a stat about Pete DeBoer you were telling me about yesterday. Um, Pete DeBoer is the first well, first coach in NHL. Hit, well, he's done it twice. He's the first coach to ever do this twice. Was take a team that didn't make the playoffs the year before and bring them all the way to Stanley Cup Final. He did it in 2012 with the New Jersey Devils. And now has done it in 2016 with the San Jose Sharks. The devil should not have made the finals Wait, in 2012. Granted, <laughs> yes, I agree. Uh, that was yeah. one of the worst finals ever. I had to cheer for the devils. <laughs> that was probably I had to the cheer worst for the finals devils. ever. <laughs> I didn't watch it. I, now, no, I lied. I watched Game 5. That was Kings, right? When they were 8th yeah. seed? Oh, yeah. where the Kings, oh, threw, game, where oh. Kings threw Game 4. Dan's convinced yeah. of it. And I am with him on it. I'm with him on it. They threw Game 4, four. to win on a home ice. Like, for sure. No, through game four and five, they they, they won in they five. Lost, they? they lost. No, they game won in four. six because New Jersey was the only one who actually won two games against. Them. Right. They right. lost. They lost game four and lost game five on purpose to win at home in game six. Now, which got me to thinking is is this does this mean that San Jose was actually a good team and Tom McClendon was the problem? Like this is the one real proof that firing a coach was the problem. Granted, they brought in guys like Joel Ward, uh, Martin Jones, Paul Martin to shore up their defense, and then they made acquisitions at the trade deadline like Nick Spalling, James Reimer, who, granted, hasn't played in the playoffs, but has helped them, did help them down the stretch. Uh, Roman Polak, who's been tremendous on their blue line for the most part. It's been a great management move, but is this more telling that a coach does make a big difference? Or the team the just get hot at the right time. Or is the team just hot at the right time? They have like what do they have like the top three scores in they the playoffs. Top three right scores now? in the playoffs. Marlowe or not Marlowe, sorry, Pavelski, Couture, and Burns are all. Well, and we were talking about this last night too. What's their top six? Like their top six their, is their top six right now, their first line is Thornton, Pavelski, Hurdle, then it's Dunskoy, um, Marlowe, and Couture. <sighs> really good. And then you have guys like Vlasic and Burns and Martin on as your top three. And you get, we're for even like Joel Ward's contributing. And Joel Ward's third, yeah. their third line oh. solid. Their fourth line's good as well. Their four line team. The ageless, the other ageless wonder that I had Dynas, no idea was still playing. Dinah Supers. Yep. No, he's still playing. Dude, he's, he's on their fourth, fourth line. line. He no plays way. the top number nine. Goals nine. And Nick Spalling. That yeah. is their fourth line. Was Dyn- that captain of New Jersey a couple years ago? Dude, okay, when's the last clip I remember of him ever playing was in the playoffs where Giroux gave him the old Hey There Fred with his elbow. You remember that play? That was the last time I remember hearing Zimbris' name until I'm watching game six and I'm like, Dyke, shut the hell up. How many minutes is he getting a game? Like four? 
I don't know. But it's he's been that. in the league for so long. And he, we did the math yesterday. He's only been in... This will be his second final. His last yeah. one was obviously with Jersey. But, like, it's hidden gems like that where they got, like, they're signing Joel Ward. They got Dunskoy. And they got... Dunskoy was the leading, Subris. leading uh, scorer in the fin- Finnish league last year. So... It's making smart moves, and this is a guy that we even said might it might be time to let go because we were talking about last summer about stripping Thornton of the captaincy, stripping Marlowe of the captaincy, and it seemed like there was unsettling stuff. Did happening. anyone even? Did any of? I know we guessed. I took a tour. Did any of us guess Little Joe? I think Hazel? I said. I think I said. Oh, okay. E- either way, I I might have said Burns. No, but that's it's. We were talking about literally on this podcast, like in the summertime, but, we were like, no, God, strip a bear, they suck, it's over. But, well, exactly. The other thing, too, though, is you've got essentially four or five leaders in that room. You have Pavelski, you have Thornton, you have Marlowe, you have the guys wearing the A's. Vlasic, even, too. Vlasic. Um, it's, they are a fantastic team who got hot. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens in the finals with them. It's going to be a very interesting finals. Yes. Two very different teams. Two extremely different teams. One team that... But the the one thing that I will say is both teams have four lines. Both teams have four lines and both teams are going with a goalie who... We don't know. Very (laughs) little experience. (laughs) They have no idea what's going on right now. Has it ever happened before where... Obviously, I'm going to generalize here, but where two goalies who are in their first seasons... Granted, Matt Martin... Or... I don't know if Murray this is Murray is in his first season, but their first postseason, their first postseason as starters. Has it ever happened where two rookie postseason goalies, so two goalies who are starters in the postseason for the first time have made it to the cup final? Who did Patrick Wall meet in his first year? Because that was rookie. Who did Cam Wood meet in 06? 06 would have been uh, Rollison. Rollison and, and then, then oh, Ty Conklin. Oh, he's going to do a quiz. That doesn't count. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Oh, it's tough. <laughs> it's impossible. Cam, oh yeah, yeah Cam Moore. Cam Moore was talking about him. Uh, Ken Dryden beat way back. Okay, well, no, but talk- seriously, yeah, like that's, that's how, how far we have like to Ken go. Ken Dryden, so, he won Con Smythe, and the following year, he won Rookie of the Year. So it, it's one of those things. Wow, that is that is incredible. Actually, Murray might be able to do that. Oh might, sh- yeah, I have up. You okay? I'm not trying to be mean yeah. about it. So nonetheless, if Pittsburgh is, wins, we have obviously quite, we have quite the storyline with that sense that. You have a goalie that was pulled from L.A. In his first full year starting, has made it all the way to the cup final. Which well, means that he's already better than Anthony Niemi. He was pulled <laughs> from California, didn't even have time to move to Massachusetts yeah. before he was back in California again. Exactly. That is a good point. He was straight to Boston, back to uh, San Jose. That's so San Jose. Yeah. You think he even I, bought a free hat or something out of that deal? Maybe. He was Boston probably for like three days. Either way. Either way. I'm very, very happy for him. Um... And then you have Matt Murray on the other side who, yeah, uh, won the job off a guy that won a cup in 2009. Which brings me to the next point, which is Tampa Bay, Pittsburgh, Game 6. They lost, Tampa Bay lost 5-2 because let's be honest, we're Tampa Bay fans here. Because we want Tampa Bay, but Pittsburgh won Game 6. Which led to Game 7, where a couple things happened. And before we get into the big thing, I want to go... And Cam probably knows where I'm going here. So Ted Bay wanted to do a thing for Game 7. Which was bring their fans in to watch their game in a live viewing party. Because they have a monster like Jumbotron. It's awesome. Well, too bad for them. Did you hear what happened? I didn't, actually. So what happened was the NHL said, well, you guys already had your viewing party. So you guys aren't allowed another viewing party unless you want to pay a fine for that viewing party. I did hear that. That's right. Is that not ridiculous for a market that's not big to say, sorry, all your fans can't come here and watch this game? They let St. Louis and San Jose do it multiple times exactly. during the course of it. So here's the other thing is maybe 2,000 people show up? Maybe. How does 2,000 a- people affect ratings that badly? And the whole reason for this is because they're claiming this is the lowest rated Stanley Cup final or Stanley Cup playoffs ever. And I've got a reason for that. Oh, I I've wonder heard. why. Well, there's there's multiple reasons. One of the reasons is... Uh, I think these viewing parties have gotten more traction. More people are watching it online. More people are frustrated with the whole sports and that CBC don't thing. count. Uh, the fact that there is no... It's not nationally broadcasted in the States. It's on NBCSN, which isn't actually something that everyone has. It's the same thing with Sportsnet in Canada. 
if you're with certain TV companies or like certain cable companies, you don't get that as a general package. So you don't you miss games because of I that. have the sports package and I still don't get NBC NBCSN. Exactly. Yeah. So you you miss it, but I'm saying with Sportsnet in Canada, you have to buy a separate package just yeah, to get. Yeah, I have the Sportsnet hockey package, which, and then like you, if you want NBCSN yeah. for like different feeds, if you don't want Sportsnet announcing. Yeah. You have to get another package. Exactly. So at so, that point, you're paying twenty five dollars additionally a month just to have it. A lot of people also just PBR the games, which also don't count towards ratings. But uh, another huge thing, I'm pretty sure every my, someone might have yelled at this point. Canada isn't in the playoffs. So. That's that's probably the the biggest one. But we're, we're like what I'm focusing but on right now here is the Amer like the reason why this view party was because a lot of the American. Um, American ratings are down as well, but it's because the the NHL has become more what um, mainstream. No, no, no. Uh, it's attainable, but I'm looking for a different word. Like you can watch it anywhere. Like you can watch it on your tablet. You can watch it wherever because you can take because there's an NHL Game Center for Americans, right? You're you're you can stream the games. You don't have to sit down at your TV and watch it. Oh, but for Americans, I mean, you could vouch for this because you went to Wisconsin. It's all about the atmosphere. Like, exactly. I mean, and we have these okay viewing parties places have. here, but like, I'd rather, much rather hang out with you guys and watch a game because I have more fun exactly. hanging out with you guys. But if you and your friends get together, how awesome is that watching a Jumbotron outside? Like, yeah. ju like Jurassic Park, let, for example. Let these things happen. That's, that's my only argument is let things like this happen. Well, you're trying to grow the game. It's good for the game. You're trying to grow the game, and it's good that you have like a new team in the finals this year. But like for the Canadian viewers, this won't matter as much. But for the American viewers, it's a team like San Jose. Are they going to want to watch that? Probably not, compared to a team like Chicago, or a team like LA. Yeah, the teams that they know. But here's the other thing: is you have a team like Pittsburgh, who has got the best player on the planet. Still, it's very hard to argue that Crosby isn't, but. This is a game that should, if you're if you're a hockey fan or even a casual fan, you should want to watch. But you're turning people off the game by saying, "Sorry, you can't do a viewing party where all your friends can get together." What is next? Sorry, bars, you can't show NHL games. If I'm sorry, as the NHL, you are fourth place out of the four major sports leagues in North America. Do whatever you can to grow your game. Don't focus on the ratings. Do something and say. We need to create moments for people that they'll never forget. I agree. Like, if you're looking for viewers and you're like, you need viewers, why are you shutting things like what's going on with Tampa down there? You need people to watch the game. So what's the best way to do that? Let's not let them watch the game. Because they're thinking those 2,000 people are going to go home and watch the game. Well, maybe they're not now. Because you know what? If we're if off, let's say... The 10 people that are in our friend group are like, let's go watch, let's go down to True North Square, which is something that's getting built in Winnipeg. Let's go watch the Jets play against the Blackhawks in round one. Let's go down there. So we go down there, we go watch it. We are more inclined to go watch that game because we're out and about going to watch it versus if we're just sitting at home doing nothing. And after, before and after the game, even during. It's going to promote downtown city life because we're going to be there. We're going to be, hey, let's go for food here. Or let's go it, for go for a drink here afterwards. It's just good for the city. And now they're just shutting that away as well. The NHL has done so much in the last five years to be like, no traditions, no... Like, they are so trying to stay the course of what 1940 NHL was. And the truth of the matter is, this is the way sports are going. You see it with basketball. You see it with NFL. You see it in every sport that these viewing parties are happening. It's... Becoming more of a spectacle to just go to a game or be part of an event like this. That they should go with the times in that. It's the same thing with the Olympics. And you look at it, basketball, no hesitation to go. If a guy loses, like, tears his Achilles or something like that in the Summer Olympics, you won't hear a GM complain. Maybe a GM might complain. But no one will think, well, they won't go in 2020. Perfect example. Paul George at the last Olympics literally snapped his leg in half. And the G, he's a he is he was and is the main player for the Indiana yeah, Pacers. Pacers. Yeah. yeah, and the GM said he said you know what it's a shame that he got hurt. I wish him the best of luck, but he didn't say like oh never going to the Olympics again. Screw that idea. He didn't bring up the Olympics. He said it's a shame that he got hurt, and we will help him advance his career and get better and recoup. Now here's the other thing is it's an honor for a lot of people to go there and we're finding that out more and more with European players. We talked about that with the hockey champ Team uh, Russia. With World <laughs> Hockey Championships. 
It's going to be interesting because the Summer Olympics this year is the first time golf has ever been in it. And golfers spend, a, like, their entire living is on their own. They're not part of a team. So, you know, if they get hurt, they don't get money if they get hurt. They don't have insurance for that. So if someone gets hurt at the Olympics, are they all of a sudden going to say, well, I don't want to go anymore because I might get hurt at the Olympics. It's a spectacle to go play there. So the NHL should get off their high horse and just say, we're going to let people Wait, go. they're not insured? Okay, the way the way I think it is is if you get hurt, oh, you don't make mean, money. You're, oh, you're self employed. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, okay, got it. It's, it's like, like uh, the only thing that'll be affected is like your sponsors. Yeah, like I still think you get the sponsorship money, but like you don't probably, go. But and, if you get if you like a golfer goes and he gets hurt, sponsors probably aren't going to be that happy. But it, oh, you're right. Oh, but, but at the at Olympics, you're not allowed yeah. to show sponsors. No, because think about hockey equipment. You have to cares? cover. Yeah, you have to cover up all the logos and everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's I st- I, golf. I it's a it's an n- easy decision. Go to the Olympics. Like, who the fuck is running the NHL? Who the fuck is running this league? Because they're running it into the ground. Soon we're gonna talk about how this is on the same level as cr- cricket. 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 I think cricket's Didn't actually. Guy just get I'm Gary not... Batman's face tattooed on his ass. Yeah. Because he lost a joke. He was jokingly tweeting, uh, "If Chicago and LA get bounced in the first, first round." round. I'll tweet it. I will get Batman's face tattooed on my ass. Now, That's going to be a weird one to explain 30 years Obviously, ago. the silver lining for Tampa Bay fans in Game 7 was the fact that Steven Stamkos, their captain, got you to come bastards. back in Game 7 and play. And he didn't look that bad. Was he ready? I, he didn't play. No. Like, you know he was not ready. He was ready. doing like fourth line minutes and power play time. And there wasn't that much power play he time. He played about 12 minutes. I think it was like 11 minutes. He had and one seconds. solid scoring opportunity and Murray stopped him. I still, I'm now starting to lean towards that he's, he's a great, fantastic hockey player, but he's no, I don't think he's on the same level as like John Tavares or, well, Crosby or Malkin. I think they're, at, or Jamie Benn even. I think Jamie Benn is better than Steven Stamkos at this point. Uh, that's tough to say. Like just a couple of years ago, Stamkos shared the, the rocket with Crosby. He <laughs> had like 50 goals, 52 goals, whatever it was. See, you're saying this now, obviously, because yeah. he's been hurt. You haven't seen him, but I can see where you're coming from, but also you're, Ben is a great player, for sure. But he's also had two great years. Stamkos yeah. hasn't. So that's what we're thinking. Well, and also, like ben, ben, I agree. Ben is a great player. Ben didn't start producing these points until Tyler Sagan came over. True enough. There you go. Yeah. But, no, that, that is a very good point. So, okay. Staying or going? Stamkos. Okay, so his, the, quote, the, his yeah. quote at the end of the game was, it was an honor to play with these guys tonight. He's gone. But no, he, hold on. Whoa. According to He both, said we have unfinished business too. Yes. I saw that come out of his mouth. Yes. So I think here's the thing, is everyone's sold on the fact that he's gonna sign like a seven, eight year or six, seven year contract. Why doesn't he sign a two, three year contract in Tap Bay just to stay there? The problem is, is Tap Bay, they are crunched because Kil Kalorn, their their young core is up and they don't have the cap space to sign in. And really, a, a contract like Stamkos is cripples you in the future. It does. If I was in Tampa Bay's shoes, like, obviously, Stamkos, he's one of the best in the league. You want mm-hmm. him around. But after watching them play in the playoffs, you can maybe think that, you know what, maybe we can we can get by without him. I I actually agree with you more I, it, I like him in Tampa Bay jersey. I think that he belongs there. But this, the team can still be successful without him there. And that $10 million, $11 million can be put to better use, can be put to another guy, a couple guys on their team to fill out that roster. And also, come trade them, deadline time, they can fill out their roster a little bit better by absorbing some contract. Like get, ter- Bad example, but getting a guy like Milan Lucic at – Trade deadline, you're able to do that. A guy that has $5 million on his contract, you're able to do that. No, I agree. If he's not on your team. I think one thing that, um, that Tampa, one of the reasons why Tampa did lose to Pittsburgh is Pittsburgh, they had better depth. Oh, 100%. So you take that contract that Stamkos has and you can spend that towards some depth players and then you can get a very solid team. Game 7, by the way, 2-1 final for Pittsburgh. The scariest moment, I think, that all most Pittsburgh fans remember, and I'm sure, did you watch the game? I sure did. Like, 30 seconds left, did they have, like, three defensive zone face-offs? 
And who scored? Was it Matt Cullen that scored a goal? And then it was called back because yeah, it hit Hagelin. someone's left. Hagelin. Hagelin scored, and it hit the glove on the bench or something, and Stamkos was whining, and he, rightfully so. It clearly hit something. But, no. Well. They called it before Were it crossed you? the blue, though. That's And then Hagelin, because it was so loud, Hagelin didn't uh, hear it. Oh, see, I was shot. watching it at a bar, so I couldn't really hear that well. Were you, oh, okay. Were no, you like, loud. a little worried about that when that happened? Oh, fuck, I have no nails left. I have no nails <laughs> Was it a good Game 7? Like, obviously, after, bef- before we start, we saw two of the worst Game 7s ever, Western Conference, with San Jose just absolutely clobbering um, Nashville, and St. Louis just bending Dallas over. Was this a good Game 7? It was stand? better than those ones, but it wasn't the greatest. See, like, like, Tam- Pittsburgh, ha- Pittsburgh dominated Game 7. They outshot them by, like, 2-1. to one. They had way more scoring opportunities. They dominated puck possession. They dominated face-offs. The fact that they weren't scoring made me sweat because that's just how things work in hockey. If you don't score and you should be scoring, odds are the other team is going to come down and yeah, score. Yeah, that's always <laughs> it. Like where you're peppering the goal, you get like four or five shots off in a row. Next shot well, on your net's go back in. to like Philly in round one there when Washington had like 40 shots and Philly yeah. had 10. Yeah, Philly won been... that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So... Stage has been set for the Stanley Cup final this year. Pittsburgh Penguins versus the San Jose Sharks. Now, I'll just... I tweeted this the other day. Since 2008, there's only been one year that did not involve the Penguins, the Kings, or the Blackhawks in the Stanley Cup final. Is it time for GMs to just start paying attention to what these teams do? Yes. Like, <laughs> legitimately. Because we all remember, and I'm sure you remember this, was... Everyone in the late 2000s, early 2010s, wanted to adopt the Boston model. They've only been to the cup final twice in that time. Whereas these teams have all been there multiple times. Oh, with Pittsburgh, it's like, they've, like, I'm, I understand what you're saying. They've been there three times, but they have had, like, a six-year hiatus. But all, all, Seven I'm, years. all I'm saying is, is it, it's, Pittsburgh's always been in the conversation, they had, in those They've seven years, other than this year, they've only made the conference final once, and they got destroyed by Boston. But I get what you're saying, though. I get yeah. what you're saying. It is, but they're in the playoffs every year. There's no parity because right now there's an issue in Boston. There's a lot of people that don't really know where Boston is. Yeah, Boston just sucks. They're in the middle, right? And everyone, after Boston won in 2011, everyone wanted to be the next Boston Bruins. And it's just, it doesn't work. Isn't so, that why Vancouver traded for Cassian? Well, we'll get to Vancouver later in the show. Um, but they wanted to beef up. They wanted they, to be like they Boston. They wanted to oh, be we'll like Boston. Get there. Yeah. We'll get there. Um, it's just very... It, it's very depressing as a hockey fan to realize that your team is not one of those dynasty teams. Because really the Kings have a, are deep and the Blackhawks are deep and the Penguins are deep. And it's just it's one of those things. That, why aren't other teams doing what... Copying what these teams have done, well, which all those teams they struggle for years, right? There's a reason why they have all those good players. A hundred percent agree, but it's it's asset management. I don't think the Penguins have made, other than Ben Lovejoy for Simone Dupre, they have not made a bad move in a very long time. Rutherford traded Scuderi for Trevor Daly straight up. That's probably the best deal any team made this year. I don't know. I still think the Kessel deal is, has helped them out tremendously, especially in the playoffs. Oh, I'm not saying. The Benito yeah, no. deal, the Swaglin deal. Like. These, are, these are the things. And <laughs> sometimes, and we've talked about with um, Shovel Day Olive before, is sometimes you have to go out and you have to be aggressive. You have to make these deals that, you know, it just you got to be aggressive. And the other thing, too, is right now you've got guys like Rust for Pittsburgh who are performing. And you've got guys like, um, I don't know who else, who's there, f- they have another guy on Pittsburgh right now, and I can't think of his name, but they drafted him and they've let him grow for a little bit of time. He's Defensive? got a really weird sounding name. Dumo I? Not Dumo. Dumo. He's great. There's another guy, and I can't think of his name right now. Fuck. This is Oh, Shear? No. I don't think Shear was drafted. I think he was a nope. free agent. It might not have been drafted yet, but nonetheless, they, they get guys that fill super cer- fast. They, really they, they get guys who fill certain spots on their team, and it just it's been fantastic to watch. I'm not gonna lie. It's it's one of those things that I want for Toronto so badly, 
Like, so badly. Trump oh, Kuhn, Kuhn, Kuhn Hackle. Kuhn Hackle. Oh, Kuhn Hackle. Oh, yeah. he's so good. I love Kuhn Hackle. Exactly. <laughs> like, you need guys like that on your team. So, what are we thinking this series for our picks? Well, Dan, since he's not here, he picked Sharks and Six, and his guy is who? <sighs> Didn't he pick Couture? He picked Couture. I have yeah. Sharks and Six with Liu Zhou. That is that like Consmite? Is that what you're going for? No, we for our time for our round. Oh, by the way, Greg won the round. Yeah. Which is Dan wanted me to note as specifically this. Isn't it ironic that Dan and I now owe Greg pizza? After me not getting them a Christmas present this year. But who do you have in the series? Obviously Pittsburgh, but in home again. I do, I do like I believe Pittsburgh is gonna win. Okay. Speaking that's with the not heart confident. and with the brain. Oh, that is not confident. No, I think San Jose right now, they are the hotter team. I think Pittsburgh is the better team. And I think the Penguins are going to win. I would say, but well, it's going to go a while. I'm going to go six games. Nice. I have Sharks in seven. And solely because I think it's going to be a back and forth series all series long. It's going to come down to one game. And I think the Sharks in one game can do it. I, I just think... The inexperienced Matt Murray, I think Martin Jones can win. Oh, he's so series. much more experience. He's so much more <laughs> NHL experience. It's going to come down, like, you say it's one Those game. Goalies. Like, it's going to come down to goaltending. Which goalie yeah. shows up? And how good Phil Kessel is. And how good Phil Kessel is. Who's our Kron Smythe picks? Mine's Phil Kessel. For the Penguins, I think it will be Kessel. Yeah, me too. I think he's the only real logical choice. There's, so there's some arguments for other guys, but he's the, he's the standout. Shark. Like the Sharks, Sharks that's a bit. Pavelski I'm, or Couture? Mine's Pavelski because Pavelski has been shown up. Like, Couture has recently shown up, which you can steal it, but my pick's Pavelski. You can't count out Burns either. Yeah, see, there's a few, but like, I think Pittsburgh, there's like, it's... Can well, we no, it? Pittsburgh, it's Murray or Kessel. With Pittsburgh, like, well, honestly, with both teams, the goalie's always an option. If Murray gets a shadow... It could also and, be Crosby, because Murray, let's be honest, like Crosby, if... Eh, I don't know. I don't know. Crosby had a good round against the Rangers, and he hasn't done much since. He hasn't like, done much. But he's, been, sorry, he's been good, but he hasn't been putting up the points. But it's Crosby, and we know how much the NHL wants to promote Crosby. No, Crosby, you can't Crosby deny Crosby did not Kessel. win the Conn Smythe in 09. You're USA denied Kessel. Kessel. Well, which we'll talk there. about. You but USA denied Kessel. Kessel. Yeah, but you can't... De- USA made some pretty bonehead picks. They did. We got we'll, 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 we'll get there. We'll get there. Great no, job, no. Greg. I, I had to... It's fucking Phil Castle. Okay, so if it's not Castle, then who's your pick? It's Murray. It has to be. It's Murray. It has to be. Who do you even, even though we're Murray too, I guess. If it's not Castle, my yeah. first pick is Castle. Second pick would be Murray. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and Pavelski's my pick. Since or, yeah. most cup finals by a team since 84 85. Let me guess, Penguins are number one? Yeah, this will be there. Since 84 oh, 85. Oh, God. So they made it in 90 91. I don't know okay. if they made it before that from like 85 to I'm I'm going to say they've been in it six times. Five, five times. Oh, yeah. five. So all five times. Okay, and they're tied for second. And they've won. They're tied for points. second with two other teams. Who are okay. those teams? Um, Detroit. No. Montreal. Edmonton. New York Islanders. No, because Islanders would have been before 84. New- so you have Pens Rangers. And, and Oilers. Devils. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because that's number, right. Number one Broder is, is in fact, good. Detroit with yeah. six. Okay. Okay, so I wasn't wrong. This sin- yeah, no, no, you weren't <laughs> wrong. You just... Yeah. Interesting. Very cool. Which is, when I saw this list, I was like, oh my God. So yeah, Detroit was back-to-back in like 97, 98. Back-to-back, like 08, oh, one, 09. They oh, got like 03 as well. They were in there. another one kicking around in there, yeah. yeah they, oh, th- oh, two. Oh, two. Oh, two. They were there. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah, with like... Don't Every, don't. All the Hall We've of read that roster. It is unbelievable. All the Hall of Famers. It's like 13 of 16 players are literally Is there a salary cap back then? Yeah. I, nope. I, I, I'm aware of the roster. Yeah, so yeah. It was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even fair. They had like Luke Robitaille, uh, Brett Hall, Brendan Shanahan, Sergei Fedorov, Steve Eichmann, Nicholas Lidstrom, Pavel Datsuk in his rookie season. Did Brett Hall have two cups? I thought his only cup was his uh, foot in the crease goal. No, no he's got two. He's got two. Yeah, one two hey, don't yeah. forget about the super, Dominic Hasek. The other rookie on that team, okay? Who? I think. I hope I'm right. I it's not Zetterberg if you're thinking Zetterberg. Sean Avery. Was that he might have been on that team. I think Avery did get a cup with Detroit. Yeah. Well, oh, hold on. His name's not on the cup. He has a ring. He didn't get voted in. Because he didn't play well, enough, enough games. Well, he is a bit of a douche. Yeah. So, right. okay if his name's not. Nonetheless, let's move on to the World Cup of Hockey. Because this is the NHL's chance to say, hey, we don't need you Olympics. Let's do our own terrible tournament. 
that doesn't involve all the countries. <laughs> so the final um, additions to every team was announced. Obviously, some big glaring um, omissions were out there. So There were some question marks. <sighs> some question marks? Willie Nylander wasn't named Team Sweden? Okay, are we... What, are we we want to start with teams. Sweden? Let's, should we start, start with, with Sweden? Sweden? I don't know Sweden. Well, you got one that. big one for me was no Klingberg. No John Klingberg. Yeah, that's right. That was... Okay, pull up the roster and tell them, because I don't have Sweden either. I, I think with Sweden, there was, there was two that really... Klingberg and Nyquist. Klingberg and Nyquist, yeah. There were yeah. two... If we could pull it, yeah. Okay, right. so Maybe their we'll players know. added were Hornquist, Haglin, Silverberg, Kruger, and Soderberg, along with Matthias Ekholm and Robin Lehner in net. Ekholm, like, like he is good. I, I can see why you pick him. Who's the other D? See, that's the thing. It's like I think they took Cromwell, which I would not have taken. So it would have been Cromwell, Carlson, Douglas Murray. No, like, no. Oh God, there. no, no. no. I don't even know if he has a job. <laughs> that was going to be my next question. <laughs> it's rough. They're they're not as strong as they could be. Name the roster because I'm. Waiting. I know oh, that's only the players have. added. Oh, okay. I'm trying to load a button. I, um. I, Zero service. I could have. I could have told you the Wi-Fi password when we got here. Well, Greg. Yeah. Well, that happens. That. We can't say now. This is the either end. way. That, those are the players added. Omission being Nyquist. Carl Nyquist. Hagel made. It. Carl Hagel made it, which he, is good. I expect him to be there. So. Then really the seven players added for Team Finland: I Eric Holla, Aho. I don't know who that is. Sebastian Aho. I just uh, love Sweden. Polka. Vili Polka. The Pisto. Sammy Lapisto. He wasn't added. He was already there. Yoki Pack. No, it says seven players added. This okay. is from Sportsnet. Right. Okay. Yoki Paka? I don't oh, know Yerky Yoki Paka, yeah. Uh, Koskinen Nico was Koskinen. their goalie during the World Championships. And Patrick Laine. I'm okay with Laine. He, he, oh. he had a very good double IHF. He had a very good year, yeah. actually. He did. <laughs> A very good year, and we talked about it last podcast. He's so playing won very year. too good. Who's the I third think. goalie for Finland? Well, here are the goalies: Rask, Rene, Koskinen. All right, so I, uh, this is final roster team Sweden: Nicholas Baxter, Malui Eriksson, Philip Forsberg, Carl Hagelin, Patrick Hornquist, Marcus Kruger, Gabriel Landeskog, Daniel Sedin, Henrik Sedin, Jakob Silverberg, Carl Soderberg, Alex Steen, Henrik Zetterberg, Matthias Ekholm, Oliver Ekman Larsson, Victor Hedman, Nicholas Jarmelson, Eric Carlson, Nicholas Cronwall, Anton Strahlman. Robin Lehner, Langfist, and Jakob Markstrom. The only two gripes I have is um, Soderberg. I would not have taken... I would take Nyquist every time. I would too. And there's, then, there's uh, who's the other handful. one? I would have taken Nyquist over. I'm surprised. Oh, and Echo. I would not... I'd take see, Kleber Echo, over. I'm like, he's a solid defenseman. But, but yeah, you... No, no, but see, that's the thing. That's why they took him. Because they don't need more offense. They already have the offense from Carlson and Ekman Larson. You don't need a third. Another guy, like, maybe it might just be me. I might just have a little gripe with a guy, but Cromwell. I don't think Cromwell's all that great. He's not. He's just older. I'm going to refrain from my argument with Cromwell because he's a Detroit Red Wing. Yes. He knows okay. how to hit. I'll give him So that. the full team, I'll, I'll say the seven players added Team Europe. Tobias Ryder, Nino Niederreiter, Marion Gabrick, pierre Edward Bellamere. Ah, uh, yeah, Pebs. Lucas Pisa. Christian Erhoff and Thomas Grice. So their full lineup is now Matt Zuccarello, Thomas Bannock, Thomas Tatar, Tobias Ryder, Franz Nielsen, Nino Niederreiter, Anze Kopitar, Marion Hosa, Yannick Hansen, Marion Gabrick, Leon Dreisaitl, Mikael Bodker, Mark Strait, Andre Sakara, Dennis Seidenberg, Lucas Sabiza, Roman Yossi, Christian Erhoff, Zdeno Chara, with goaltenders Yar- Yaroslav Halak, Thomas Grice, and Fedrick Anderson. I'm making a treats of pizza deal right now for the podcast. If they win a game... I will get a treats of pizza for the podcast. They're not winning a game. They're not that winning a game. That roster sucks. Sucks. That's awful. Which goalies did they pass on for those guys? Well, who are their goalies again? Yarrow, uh, Anderson, and Grice. Grice. Anderson? Frederick. Frederick. Oh, Yarrow, Anderson, Grice. Uh, Hiller? To Switzerland? Oh, Hiller. I, I would pass well, on Well, I'm just trying to think of goalies that aren't I feel like there's, there's a big name out there who they did not take. For oh, Europe. Europe. Oh, uh, Czech goalies. Czech. Czech goalies. I've got Czech Republic right here. So they added... Sorry, well, name your goalies. Czech Republic. Let me find Czech Republic. Oh, I got it. Oh, I got it right here. I've got it right here. Sorry. Uh, their goalies for Czech Republic are Mrazik, Neuwirth, and Pavlik. And those are already named. 
So the na- the seven named players for Czech Republic are Milan Mahalik, Dmitry Yaskin, Jaskin, Alish Hemsky, Radik Faxa, Jakub Nikladal, Nakladal, Nakladal, Zibnik Mahalik, Michael Jordan. The Michael. You yeah, I was doing so. Say. <laughs> <laughs> rounds out their full roster of Jakub Voracek, Vladimir Sabotka, Thomas Plekanec, David Pasternak, Andre Palat. Milan Mahalik, David Krejci, Dmitry Yaskin, um, Thomas Yertel, Alex Hemsky, Martin Hansel, Michael Frelik, Radek Vaxa, Andre Schuster, Roman Polak, the guy I can't pronounce, Zimonik Mahalik, Michael Kempney, Michael Jordan, <laughs> um, Radko Gudis, Andre Pavlik, Michael Norvath, and Peter Morazic. So do you think this team will lose to Team Europe? This team's going to mop the floor with Team Europe. Okay. I'm com- like this I is I'm. You think Europe can beat this team? The only the only With player. One goalie. The only With gla- one goalie. Who's Frederick starting? Anderson. No, that's not. The, the, the who, glaring- do you, who do you think starts for Team Europe? Anderson or Yarrow? Anderson. Or Grice? Anderson. Uh, Anderson. Anderson. Right? I hope. Who's Isn't that funny? Anderson. Wouldn't it be funny if Grice started over at Halak again? <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for Yarrow. <laughs> okay, um, so let's move now to Russia and. Whew! Do they know how to piss people off? Now, these are the seven players added for Russia. As I pull up the wrong list. Sorry. Uh, these are the seven players added for Russia. Ivan Taligan, Vadim Shipachev, Evgeny Dadunov, Nikita Zatsev, Toronto Maple Leaf. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Alexei Morchenko, Alexei Emelin, and the one, the only, woman beater, Slava Voinov. Boynov. Depart! You got deported! Boynov. You're not allowed back in Canada! I'm pretty sure Boynov legally cannot play. He can't play. Wait, what, do you, mean? what do you mean he can't He's play? He's not allowed to play. He's not allowed to play. The, the NHL has said we'll look into this, but chances are he's probably not going to play. Wait, hold on. The fact Who's that... the defenseman that they were like, you know what, we'd rather <laughs> name a not available then have you on the team. I, I don't know. And like I, the Russian, the Russian coaching staff, they're upset with the NHL because the NHL has said like, Boy, I probably won't be able to play. And they're like, wow, we should be able to send wherever Who's we want. Who's the coach? He was calling out, um, he was calling out Yakupov. Yeah, he was I, calling out Yak. Yeah. And Yak wasn't even on the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, he said, he said they were better without him being there. Yeah. 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 I can't remember his name. Oh but here's their final roster. Ivan Taligan, Vladimir Tarasenko, Vadim Shipachev, uh, and Termi Pernarin, Alex Ovechkin, Vladimir Nemestikov, Evgeny uh, Malkin, Evgeny Kuznetsov, Nikolai Kuluman, Nikita Kucherov, Pavel Datsuk, Dadunov, Amnisimov, Zatsev, Voinov, Orlov, Markov, Marchenko, Kulikov, Emelin, Vasilevsky, Varlamov, and Bobrovsky. So actually a pretty solid lineup you, for Team Russia. Did you see Radulov in there? Aaron? Uh, no, Radulov is not on the team. Uh, good, because he's a bum. Radulov is not there. How do you feel about Radulov? Why? Yeah. What, did, what did he do to you? And to round out like Team uh, Finland, this is their full team, which is Tevo Teravainen, Litera... Laine, Korpakoski, Komarov, Koivu, Jokinen, Hala, Granlin, Filp- uh, Filpula, Dunskoy, Barkov, Aho. 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 Vetnin, Ristolainen, Poka, Mata, Lindell, Lepisto. Lepisto? Sammy Lepisto. Yokopaka, Rene, Rask, and Koskinen. I will see you in the finals. Well, that's a championship. That is that is Hopefully a solid. Hopefully, Mana team. plays better for Finland than he has for the Penguins in these playoffs. Right now, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna throw this out there. None of these teams seem to be nearly as good as the Young Stars. I do not have that roster with me. Which I, I will now say the new guys that made the Young Stars team: Mark Scheifele, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Austin Matthews, Jonathan Drouet, Jacob Truba, Colton Pareko, and Shane Gostisbehere. Now, oh, the one guy that was close to make this team was Alex Galchenyuk, but he was passed over for Austin Matthews, obviously. I would have known. So, I would take out Nuge and put Galchenyuk there. Okay. I, uh, I think I would agree with you there as well. I would disagree. Fucking I, Nuge, Nuge is good. All right. So here's I'm, not our, to, I'm not saying he's not good, but I'd take Galchenyuk. I think Because he can play both roles. Nuge can get roughed up, and then he's I think Nuge game. is the better player. I would take Nuge. Okay. Now, here's a roster. It's fucking good. Mark Shifley. Oh, wait, are we going to... 
Oh, we're talking about the whole roster. This, okay, this good. Is, you go. Sorry. This is Young Stars. Okay. Mark Shively, Brian Ensaud, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Sean Monahan, JT Miller, Connor McDavid, Austin Matthews, Nathan McKinnon, Dylan Larkin, Johnny Goudreau, Jack Eichel, Jonathan Drouin, Sean Couturier to round out their forwards. Jacob Trooper, Morgan Riley, Colton Pareko, Ryan Murray, Seth Jones, Shane Gosses Bear, Aaron Eckblad, Matt Murray, Connor Hellebuck, and John Gibson. First of all, probably the best goalie so far that we've talked about. I don't know whose idea it was to have an <laughs> under-23 team in the World Cup of Hockey, but they are a genius because that is going to be amazing to watch. If that I don't, team does not medal, I'm going to be upset. That team might win. Yeah, they, they might win. Like, they're for sure medaling. The, I would like to see it. I can't. I can't. I think would love of, to see them win. I can't think of a weak point in this team right now, other than maybe JT Miller. You but need he's role still players. Decent. He's still decent. Like see, they don't have a weak player on this team. And when you think about it, I think the lowest drafted guy on this team, probably Dylan Larkin, because he's a Detroit Red Wing. Because you have Mark Shifley, who is top ten, Brandon Sod, who is a top ten. No, he was not. He was second round. Was he second? Yeah, yeah you're right. That. Sorry, yeah. he's second round. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, number one. Sean Malahan ta- uh, was a first rounder. JT Miller, first rounder. Connor McDavid, first overall. Austin Matthews, future first overall. Nathan McKinnon, first overall. <laughs> Dylan Larkin, first rounder. Johnny Goudreau, where was he drafted? First round? Yeah. Oh, shit, no way. Like, so he's third, probably, fourth, he's fifth, probably the lowest. Man. Jonathan Jurain, top three. Sean Couturier was top ten. Jacob Truba, top ten. 10. Morgan Riley t- uh, was number 5. Colton Pareko, not sure where he was drafted. Ryan mm-hmm. Murray was number 2. Was, Seth like, Jones was number 4. Shane Gostas Bear was second round? First round? Uh, third. Third round. Aaron That's- Eckblad, first overall. There are a lot of first overalls. <laughs> There's, a- There's a lot of first overalls. <laughs> the only guys that were unsure of, well, there's three that were out of the first. <laughs> One guy we're not sure. That's only four guys. <laughs> That aren't outside of like top thirty players. Uh, yeah. The only kink in that kink in the not even kink, but Jacob Trouba's got a friend on the picking squad for this. I didn't did not expect him there. But what defenseman is Def- better than him? That well, see, I thought I thought they only had to name two left. So I said at the start, like midway through the year, I said Pare- Pareko oh. and Ghost. Yeah, obviously I'm being biased with Ghost, but. No, it's the right. I'm it's a smart yeah. pick. Yeah, you'd be, you'd be stupid. But not no, to but take but then exactly. Truba, I'm looking at it and I'm like, man, he's going to play a defensive role. They're not going to put offense because they don't need it. So let's move to Team USA. And at, once we name all the rosters, we will fully say what where each team's going to play. So you what do you think? Okay just while we're on the under the 23 yes. year olds here, who do you think starts in net? In net, I think Matt Murray right now. Oh yeah, I don't oh. think it's anyone else other than Matt Gibson's Murray. Gibson's the only one who has actual like starting experience. But I think Matt Murray, especially if if he takes Pittsburgh to a cup, no reason why not. Well, if he, then if he'll have no the way, but then he'll have a short summer. Doesn't matter. You come. On. You Doesn't don't matter. think who's the GM for Pittsburgh? Rutherford. She, Rutherford. Man. You don't think Rutherford is going to make a phone call to the GM of Team USA or the under twenty three saying, "Please don't don't ride him too hard." Then yeah. John Gibson. I right now I'm. Hard pressed to pick anyone. I don't know. <laughs> they have three remember. goalies that are good goalies. I think the guy who starts the first game will be Gibson. Okay, fair enough. Do they all get a game? Yeah, they, all they will game. all get a game for sure. They'll all get a game. I think every goalie will get. You a give game. Hellebuck Europe. Yeah, obviously. He'll be yeah. Fine. Or or Even with Hellebuck, or Czech Republic. Yeah, or Czech Republic. <laughs> Check pretty bad too, yes. Okay. Okay. Or the Americans, basically. Here's the Americans. So they added JVR, Brandon Dubinsky, Ryan Callahan, David Backus, Matt Niskin, and Jack Johnson, Eric Johnson. One glaring omission on this list was Kevin Shattenkirk. That's a big omission. It's a big omission. Wait, who's the D? Who's the whole D core? I'll, I'll let you know in a second. Okay. The other glaring omission on here was Phil the fucking Thrill Castle. How the fuck? Fuck! Does a guy that's going into a Con Smythe playoffs not get into the fucking World Cup? Uh, how? Because how? Because they wanted Dubinsky. I can tell you how from your favorite reporter, Nick Kiprios. He okay, said, tell me. Uh, according to Nick Kiprios, he said Phil Kessel's average season this year because he didn't hit forty or fifty with the team that he played on was probably a main reason why he didn't get to go for Oh, well, <laughs> fuck you, Nick Kiprios. Did you ever, ever accumulate a season where you scored more than 10 points? Probably not, because you're terrible. The other thing you're bad at, reporting. <laughs> but you know what? I wouldn't be I wouldn't be <laughs> hard-pressed to say that isn't a reason why. But you got to look at his history. He's done well with Team USA in the past. You must shut... 
Okay, we were talking about this. The guys who got named over him were, what, JVR and... Dubinsky, Callahan, Backus. JVR, who was injured for most of last season. So how can you base it on a season when the guy was hurt for most of it? Didn't Ablocator make the team, too? You want a guy like Ablocator, though. Okay, yeah, yeah Ablocator's not a bad guy. That sucks. No, but you, you say he fucking sucks because why? So this is the whole... he's a red wing. He and, sucks. And he's a pest. And you hate him. So you need guys like that. So here, here's the full... Um, wow, I just lost it. Here's the full roster. So it's Blake Wheeler, James Van Riemsdyk, Derek Stepan, Joe Pavelski, Zach Parise, Max Pacioretty, TJ Oshie, Ryan Kessler, Patrick Kane, Brandon Dubinsky, Ryan Callahan, David Backus, Justin Abdicator. I can think of five guys that Phil Kessel's better than. Ryan Seward, Matt Niskanen, Ryan McDonough, Jack Johnson, Eric Johnson, John Carlson, Dustin Bufflin, Corey Schneider, John Quick. Ben Bishop. Shattenkirk is better than every single one of those defense. I think the only guy that he might not be better than is John Carlson. Maybe Suter. Ma, I'm Bishop. taking Suter and... He's definitely better underrated, than Niskanen. Underrated? Uh, Mc, McDonough. Because McDonough and Suter will be your top pick. Uh, top yeah. McDonough's going to be a shutdown. Because, you know, McDonough and Suter, that's your top pick. How does Mac Nis- Matt Niskanen make this Just because team? Washington had a great year. So if you base this off... The USA, Blues had a great USA. year too, but... Okay, here's the other thing. is We talked about it before back in December when USA announced their World Junior team. They fucking passed on Kyle Connor, and he's the college player of the year. They they don't know how to select teams. It's like they blacklist guys. It Honestly, it's like they talked to some report. They went to Steve Simmons were like, Steve, what do you think of Phil Castle? Well, he's fat, he likes hot dogs. We can't have him on this team then. Boom. That's what they do. That's how they make decisions. There's a lot of fucking hot dogs in Toronto and Montreal. Greg's no, no. Chris Man, right honestly, now. honestly, if Kessel wins the cup, I want him to see fuck. I want to see him eat hot dogs out of the stand. We're cup. having a hot dog party. We've already discussed. We this. already have. Yeah. But I, I just don't. I understand that maybe Phil Kessel doesn't hasn't hit all the targets that he wanted to in Pittsburgh, but it's because it was a growing pain year. He went from playing on a team where he was the guy to a team where, well. He still has the same quality <laughs> centerman. Exactly. Well, right, no, wait. right now, he I, still has the same quality centerman. I, he's think, whooping no. ass. Uh, I'd be hard-pressed to say Nick Benino is... Nicky Beezy's is, is great. ...on any way the same level as Tyler Brozak. Because I put Nick Benino above Tyler Brozak. I think Nick Benino is a the better... Only thing a I, more quality centerman. But here, before... I'm not trying no. to interrupt you. Phil, it took them a while to figure out that Phil Kessel might not benefit... Tremendously, and the team might not benefit super well if he's playing with Crosby or Malcolm. So my that team. he's better when he's with. But look at who he's playing against on the third line. He's still a good team. And it's growing pains. It happens. Oh, fucking ridiculous! Another omission. But you know it's good for him because he's gonna go. It'll give him a longer summer, and it'll give him the possibility. He to doesn't you know even train going. in the offseason. No, he doesn't, he doesn't give a shit. They're like he's actually probably happy about this because this like, gives him an extra two weeks. They're of like, party. hey Phil, uh, how was your offseason? How much time you hit the ice? <laughs> like eight. What do you mean, like eight? Eight, eight what? <laughs> eight times <laughs> he was on the ice. Um, another omission, actually, that I would say Shattenkirk and this gentleman are better than our favorite defenseman out of Carolina. Oh, the fuck. fucking All Star Justin Falk. Yeah, no, that was a that is that's a biggie. How did both Johnsons make it over those two guys? Both. Neither of them had great seasons. Jack One of them was Eric Johnson. Well, Eric Johnson. I don't base it off that. Pick, but so it doesn't matter. Him. No. You got to pick it off the basis of how. I would take both Johnsons out and put both Falk and Shattenkirk in. I, yeah, I agree with that 100%. I don't even take Matt Niskanen out. I take any of those three defensemen out and slot the other two in there. Like, I, I would think easily Niskanen. take multiple people over Niskanen. There are better defensemen out there. Either way, I think USA might not be that good this year. Are you happy with their goalie picks? Who are they going You got the guy with Quick. And you have a very good backup with Bishop. And Schneider. Oh, I was going to say Schneider. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I don't know who else you can do. I'm still more you confident in the under, Craig Anderson. The under like 23 Campbell. goalies are still better, I think. Jimmy yeah. Howard. Like. Yeah, there's nothing really that great out there. Now, for Team Canada, there are seven additions more. Jake Muzzin, Alex Petrangelo, Brent Burns, Matt Duchesne, Claude Giroux, Joe Thornton, Brad Marchand. And there are bigger omissions on this lineup, on this list. Corey Perry being one of them. Uh, defenseman Norris winner, PK Subban. Um, I, they said I, they needed they they, they needed right left handed shot. They essentially picked their D. 
It sounded like they did what how I do when I play fantasy sports or build like a team. I'm like, oh, I'm taking this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy. And then I look and I'm like, ah, shit, everyone's a left-handed D. Well, now uh, all, they had so many rights that they're like, oh, we took we took Musin because of Doughty. It's like, oh, I don't know. I, just, ah, I wouldn't have done that. One of the, and they picked a guy that gets passed up on every time with Hockey Canada, Letang? which is Chris Letang. I, they really have a... It, it, he did something, something to someone. Especially if you're basing it off of like how they're performing in the playoffs. Latane's having a very good playoffs. He really he is. He had a great I, second half of the year. It makes no sense. But I think Corey Perry, no Corey Perry on this team, is a little shocking. I don't know why you would take Marshawn over Yeah, Perry. like they're, they're the same role, but I think Perry is quite he, a bit better. He, he's bigger and better. Mm-hmm. I think Perry's better than Matt Duchesne, as hard as it is to say for that. And they're having, oh, this is TSN saying that Matt Duchesne slotted in third line right wing. Why wouldn't you put... Corey Perry. Corey Perry there, or, you know... Wait, hold on. Name the whole roster. Okay, their whole roster. So this is first line. Don't read, just read all the players. No, I'm reading first line. Okay. Is Bergeron. Why the fuck is Bergeron there? Crosby, Stamkos. Marshan second line left wing with Taves and Carter. Then you have Ben Sagan Duchesne, which is minty. But very nice. Line. Then, you, then your fourth line is John Tavares, Ryan Getzlev, Claude Giroux, and then Joe Thornton is your extra forward. Why the fuck wouldn't you put? Take I don't Mar- know. Take Marshawn out and put Perry with the guy who plays for a year round for like a decade. What are you doing? Uh, Getzlev Perry. I know. I guys, I just want to say that second line. Like he, did it. he did it. Uh, he did it. They're putting their their rivalry aside for two weeks. Giroux and Crosby. Crosby team. finally gave the okay. He finally did it. He so, gave the okay. He's in. Keith, Weber, Vlasic, Doughty, Muzzin, Petrangelo, and Burns, which is a decent defensive core, but I don't know my if only, I like Muzzin. It'd be scarier with the D would be Muzzin. I think there are guys who would be better there over him. I think, personally, now this is very biased, is I think Morgan Riley would be there if there was no under-23 team. Who else would be there if there was no one? Because there's, well, Connor McDavid, I, I would be hard pressed. And USA is real upset about that under 23 pick. Because oh, there's. Matthews would for sure be. Eichel on that for team. sure. Brandon Eichel, yeah. Sod for sure. Yeah, they're probably. Go- Johnny Gaudreau for sure. Although they probably still pass him up and take Matt Hendricks over Phil Kessel. Fuck! <laughs> it's a man! Down by the river! That's yeah, so yeah, Chris Farley right now. Uh-huh. <laughs> Full on Chris Farley. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, they do have the best goalie on the planet in Carey Price and Brain Holby and Corey Crawford, who is just. should not be. How the fuck does Corey Crawford. He is <laughs> not a good goalie. He's on a good team. Who would you take over Crawford? Canadian? That's a great point. Great question. Who Canadian okay. goalie. James Reiner. Ben Scrivens. Jonathan Bernier. All the same skill level as Corey Crawford. Who would you actually take over Crawford? All three of those. I just got spit on. <laughs> All three of those. You know why? Because they're not going to play. So it doesn't matter. Well, realistically, you want to take your three best goalies. He's not great. He's not a... Well, the guys you're naming, Greg, are backups. They're not Jay great. Jay Driver's not a backup. He is. Are you kidding me? He's yeah, a backup like, right now. Yeah, he is right now. And he will continue to be right now. Where's Jones from? Is he Canadian? Alex Jones? Mar- Martin Jones. Martin, Martin Jones. Jones. There you go. Canadian. Put him in. I would take Scott fucking Whitewood right now over Corey Crawford. And he's playing for the <laughs> Albany Devils in the AA fucking chill. And he just got eliminated. That's who I would take over Corey Crawford. Because he's terrible. I think uh, the two Blues goalies are also Canadian. Elliot. Either of them. Take either of them. I, I may be wrong on that. I may be wrong on that. I think they're both Canadian. Though. Oh. Either way. Uh, I just, agree. I don't think Crawford's all that great, but you got to think, Greg. Who would you take instead? I would take any of the goalies I named or you named. Would you take Flurry? Yes. Really? Okay. Yes, I would. Because he's got international play experience. And, well, here's By the thing, By international though. play experience, I mean he has a gold medal where he plays zero medal. games. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> the only reason why I take Corey Crawford in this series is probably because, or in this championship, is because he's got a track record of being a very terrible goalie in front of a great team. So this is, an, again... This is a, a great team. This is a great team. So he's going to be okay. He'll be okay. He's not that, going to play that's why, that's why he's there. I just want to say, if this was... If their cap hit for Team Canada... <sighs> oh, God. You want to take a I, guess? Over oh. 112 million. 112. I'm going to go about 120. 148 million. Oh, wow. damn! 148.6 million. 
We're capping. All right, so let's go top to bottom. Where do you th- who's going to win? First of all, I think we've got all summer to talk about it. But now that we've seen the rosters, who's going to win? On okay. paper, you know what? I'm going to take top four. Okay, and then four. I'll give you top four. Let's just do top four. Give give me your okay. top four. <laughs> Canada, Finland, under twenty three, USA. I've got Canada, Finland, under twenty three, Sweden. Oh shit. Yeah, that's a good I one. have Canada, Finland, under 23, and Russia. <sighs> See? No, because Russia, yeah. man, they They're, come together fast. Those last three are very interesting. Plus, I'd be shocked if Team Russia doesn't play well. Some of these European teams will probably play a little bit together in the offseason off just to kind of get some chemistry going. I wouldn't be surprised. Some chemistry? Um, some chemistry. And under 23, these guys have played against each other, so they're, they're, they'll, they'll be fine. Work. Yeah, they'll be good. Yeah, they're the best talents in the world right now. They'll have a couple scraps in like the... Practice Either way, we are going game. long, so let's quickly touch on the Jared McCann, Eric Good Branson trade, which leads me to this. So, the awesome. Vancouver Canucks <laughs> trade Jared McCann, former first round pick, to the um, Florida Panthers for Eric Good Branson. There was a second and a fourth going to Florida for a third and a fifth going back to Vancouver, is I believe how it went. So, let me read you off the roster. For the Vancouver Canucks, when they went to the Stanley Cup Final in 2011. Daniel Sedin, Henrik Sedin, Ryan Kessler, Michael Samuelson, Christian Erhoff, Alex Burrows, Mason Raymond, Alex Edler, Manny Maholtra, Rafi Torres, Yannick Hansen, Dan Hamuse, Kevin Bieksa, Jeff Tambellini, Tanner Glass, Sammy Sallow, Keith Ballard, Andrew Alberts, Chris Higgins, Aaron Rome, and then the rest of them are kind of... Didn't really play. Maybe a little bit of Cody Hodgson, uh, Maxim Lapierre, Rick Rippon. And then their goalies were Roberto Luongo, Corey Schneider. Now, according to General Fanager, right now this is their team going into this next season. So this is the offseason right now. As General Fanager loads. So first of all, not a bad team in 2010-2011. Good enough to win the President's Trophy. This is what they have right now. Henrik Sedin, Daniel Sedin, Radan Verbata, who's now a UFA, Alexander Burrows, Derek Dorsett, Chris Higgins, Yannick Hansen, Lyndon Vey, RFA, Sven Berchi, RFA, Bo Horvat, Jake Vertanen, Brennan Gounce, Emerson Edom, RFA, Marcus Granlin was signed for $900,000 for the next two years, Dan Hamus, RFA, UFA at the end of the year, Christopher Tanev, Lucas Biza, Eric Goodbranson, Mark Bartkowski, UFA, Yannick Weber, UFA, Nikita Triamkin. Triamkin, yeah, they just signed the KHL. Ben Hutton, uh, Andre Padan, RFA, Alex Biega, then in net, Ryan Miller, Jakob Markstrom. With Edler and Suter on their injured reserves. I don't know how you go from Luongo and Schneider to Miller and Markstrom. Those are... Holy shit! What the Canucks need is for the Sedins to just go away. They also need Miller to just go away. Here's the problem! <laughs> they think they can win with this team. The owner wants I don't now. think they think they can win with this team. No, the owner wants right now. They think they can win right now. Here, because well, they need to take what? advantage They're of the Sedins. They're not going to win. They're Here, not going to win. Can I just name... How old are the Sedins? Uh, 34. Right now. No, I don't care about that. Okay, never mind. How many Your left hand. years in their contract? Here, I'm just going to say this in the last year, dating back to last draft. So do you, do you want to know, Cam? Because it's, it's a bad number. How so they are years? both, sorry, they are both 35. They have 7 million this Each. season and 7 million next season. So till they're 37. That's not bad. That's not bad. Two that's players, 14 million for, uh, that's average bad. play. For three years, for the next three years. Yeah. Okay, um, this is who the Canucks traded and received. In the last year, just a year. Okay. Nick, but these are the players they traded. Nick Bonino, Jared McCann, Hunter Shinkarek, Adam Clendenning, Nick Jensen, Zach Cassian, uh, two second round picks, a fourth mm, round pick, two uh, fifth round picks, a sixth round pick. Mm, Let me name what they received. No. Brandon Sutter, Marcus Granlund, <sighs> Eric Goodbranson, Emerson Edom, Philip Larson, Brandon Prust, a third round pick and a fifth round pick. Hey, Brandon Press right now buried in the AHL, by the way. That's where he's playing. He went from being a fan favorite of Montreal to being a buried player 
Emerson uh, Edom is a RFA. Yes. Good Branson just got signed to a two year deal. He has over three hundred oh. NHL games under his contract, and you traded him for one of your best up and coming players. Your best. And his analytics are good. And here's the thing, and I don't know if you guys there were two guys that wrote for Canucks Army, which is a blog site, that went and worked for the Florida Panthers. They were analytics guys. And they generated this deal. Did they? Well, they fleeced the team they used to work on behalf of. They fleeced them. How stupid are you? Blockers be getting paid. <laughs> who's their Who's their goalies? Who are Who's their GM right now? Dale Town. Town. No. No, oh, I mean in Vancouver. Uh, Jim Benning. Jim Benning. Benning yeah. I want to phone him up and say, "Can you give me three million dollars?" Because he probably will. I don't even have to give him anything else because he's so fucking stupid. I do a better job in a video game of managing my assets than he does. Yeah, but in a video game... Ben, if you're listening to this, I'm sorry. Oh, my <laughs> God. It's an idiot. But in a video game, there's no, like, ramification. No, there isn't. But he still... Went, he's an idiot. I'm sorry. You do not trade a player as good as Eric Branson is. I don't want this to be muffled with how... I still think he's a serviceable player in the NHL. I do not think Eric Branson is a bad player. But not for Jared McCann! No! Oh! No! No! It's like... No! It's like what Jerry Jones' kid did to Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones was ready to draft someone, and his kid's like, No, Dad! You're an idiot! No! And then he drafted Dennis Bryant. Because they were going to draft someone else. And he was... Re- I think it was Robert... Gre- uh, who was it? He was ready to draft somebody, and he's like, No, you're not doing... He's like, Yeah, I'm going to do it. No! And it stopped him. And that's how it happened. That's the story of how they drafted someone. I don't remember. What you're telling me is the Canucks need new everything and new owners. They need... It's the owners because management has changed and it's still happening. It's the owners. They just got a new coach, Willie. What's his face? Hey, guys, guys. guys, It's okay, though, because of compensation, they're going to get a third round pick from the Columbus Blue Jackets. For Tortorella. For Tortorella. Well, that'll turn things around. Holy fuck! At least the one, the one silver lining is if they can draft well... Going forward. That's all they need. The if owner's going to override it. But here's the thing. The flashy pick. Here's the weird thing. is Dating back to 2009. I'm sure we all remember 2009. We graduated high school in 2009. I remember 2009. It was a great year for hockey. The yeah. Pittsburgh yeah. Penguins <laughs> won the Stanley Cup. Okay? Okay. The Hershey Bears were in the AHL final against who? The Manitoba Moose. We all remember that. I do. Because we all remember where Sidney Crosby is supposed to take the cup back to. Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nonetheless, is you have a franchise that went from being AHL, AHL finalists, then were Stanley Cup finalists, to being the laughing stock of the NHL. It is the one league, well, granted, the NFL does have some parodies. They're fucking stupid. You have a 26-year-old in Arizona that's going to do a better job than this guy is. Better job. Oh, my goodness. I just, I don't get it. And I'm not a hot, I, I don't do this for a living. I don't focus on hockey as a living. And I know this is a bad trade. How does everybody know except for people in Vancouver? Vancouver is saying they fleece Florida. Hold on. People because in Vancouver Ari- They don't know about this trade because they're not hockey fans there. How do I know that? I went there. The one guy I saw wearing a Pens hat. It had been so long. I'd been in the the goddamn province of British Columbia. So long that I saw someone wearing a hat. Walked up to a guy. Rival. Rival of the Flyers. I'm like, Pens hat. He's like, what? I'm like, Pens hat. And they pointed. He's like, oh, it's just a hat. I wanted to fucking put his face. I wanted to throw hot water in his face and put him... (laughs) <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that worked. I'm glad I you just did. I don't understand. I didn't. I'm not in jail. I don't understand the the trigger happiness they have. Sit on something. You had three tremendous forwards in Jake Vertanen, and Bo Horvat, and Jared McCann. Oh hey, let's. You know what? And also, guy who needed a little bit of time to produce. Corey Schneider, Eric, Eddie Lack, or uh, Hunter Shakira, or Shakira. Oh yeah. yes, him. Oh, well. d- I know. I think we listened to the same podcast about this, but. Who was a guy who only had like nine or ten points in his fir- in fifty games in his first year? Just like Joe Thornton, Jared McCann, and Joe Thornton have very comparable numbers of rookie year. 
I'm very glad Thornton made Team Canada. But here, here's yeah. the other thing. Yeah. Is, awesome. This is also a team that had Cody Hodgson. Granted, he, he did get bought out. Uh, Jordan Schrader, who is who is an AHL guy. Whoa, what uh, the hell? He's on the wild. He's been up and down, right? Hodgson didn't get bought out either. He got traded. He was the... Was he, he was Cassie? bought out by Buffalo. They bought him out and then Nashville signed him. Then Nashville signed him. Oh, okay. He was the casting so deal, wasn't he? here's it? more... Here's players that are decent that we're just going to throw away. Like, they... Their asset management is just shitty. It's what the Leafs were in 2011. It's what teams are, teams that want a quick fix. And the truth of the matter is, is they were once a great, great franchise. They were once one of the hardest teams to play against in the NHL because they were talented. And there was one playoff series that ruined them forever, and that was at Stanley Cup Final in 2011 because they were bullied to shit from pests like Brad Marchand, guys like Zdeno Chara and Milan Lucic, who just beat the shit out of them. And they're like, well, we, we got to abandon this ship. It's just that they were they played against the wrong matchup. They play against the 2012 New Jersey Devils. They probably would beat them. Anyone could have beaten the 2012. <laughs> the I don't twi- know how they made I the I cheered finals. for the Devils! <laughs> the 2014 New York Rangers. They probably could have beat the 2015 Wait, see, now Tampa we're talking Lightning. Hypotheticals. But that's what I'm saying is that they just got put up against a team that matched up better against And them. that team decimated their franchise in the next 10 years. Exactly! You don't base your entire future off of one shitty series. Yes, okay? They, they, they beat them! You Copper say, bust. Copper <sighs> bust. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm not even a Canucks fan. I'm not. I've, I've been to one Canucks game in GM Place when it used to be called GM Place, actually. Didn't you go there, too? Yeah, I saw a Penguin game in, uh, in Vancouver. I don't remember. Matt Cook scored. Played. It was fucking amazing. I just remember. <laughs> I remember looking up to greats like Marcus Naslin, Brennan Morrison, who played there. And Todd Bertuzzi? <laughs> Todd Bertuzzi. <laughs> um, but I just remember looking up to those places saying, man, this is this is awesome. And then uh, you had Danny oh, City and Henderson. Oh, I'd be like Todd. <laughs> uh, and they're just, they're not that franchise anymore. They're not. And you want to be relevant in your city? Be good. Make good decisions. You don't trade a 20-year... This isn't the 80s anymore. It's not, it's not pre-cap era. It's not. It's not how you win. You don't buy a team anymore. You build a team. Well, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh bought a pretty good team this year. But, like I said, they've got guys like Rust and that guy I can't pronounce. Kunakal. Kunakal. And they have guys like Crosby, who've, Crosby, Malkin, Murray. Guys who've gone through their system. It's not just, you know, the 2002 Detroit Red Wings who, let's buy 10 Hall of Famers. It's not the same way anymore. This is not what it used to be. Memorial Cup. Quickly. Quickly Memorial Cup. Yeah, for sure. Go ahead. Uh, Brandon didn't win a game. Yeah. Very upset. Lost no Ivan Provorov named CHO Defense of the Year. Good for him. Mitchie Marnman named CHO. Least prospect. Named Player of the Year. And then we got, in the semifinal, Red Deer took down, or er, uh, took down, got I taken down by Rune Aranda. Uh, so we got the final, London playing Rune Aranda, and London hasn't, uh, they haven't lost a game in 61 days as of this podcast. Well, good for them. E- go. They're going to win the Memorial Cup. Go London. Christian Dvorak, Matthew Kachuk, Mitch Marner. That's all that needs Oli, to be said. Oli Uolevi. Is he you leave me on that team too? Yeah, dude. Oh, um, by the way, big big they, remi- they big actually remind me of uh, the what, Windsor Spitfires. Yeah, near that hallway. They're just loaded. Just um, loaded with talent. just speaking to you, Levy. Big rumors going around right now that Edmonton's loving his game. So they, they might keep their fourth pick, draft him, make him and Nurse bearing in the future. Why not? They need they need to do something. You can't go off the edge. Edmonton needs a goalie. That's what they need. I can't go off the edge again? No moss off the edge. We gotta wrap her up. Close I'm not going on an edge. And no you Thank you for listening to my emotional breakdowns. If you want to find our podcast um, uh, in other places other than where you're looking right now, uh, you can find it on YouTube, Google Play, iTunes, and anywhere else you get your podcast from, because we're there. Um, at Last Man In podcast you can find it um i showed a friend earlier this week i said that's how you find it and he said that's you I'm like, yeah that's us uh, if you want <laughs> that's literally you hear story. those sweet sweet sounds mama oh yeah, yeah. Uh, kevin do you have any words to say like promote yourself or anything i have zero promotion for myself no 
Uh, if you want to check us out on Gmail, email the show at lastmanNPC at gmail.com, at lastmanNPC on Twitter. And, uh, yeah, thank you for Kevin. Thank you to Kevin for uh, uh, filling thanks. in for Dan. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, you didn't really talk about the Penguins that much. No, we did. You went on a tyrant for a while, so <sighs> we weren't able to get into I, I'm really, I do hot air time. I'm hard-pressed to name this episode. This is what I got. Stanley Cup Final Preview slash, and these are the names I've been writing, <laughs> Greg's a-cooking. <laughs> Greg has a breakdown. <laughs> Man down by the river. <laughs> I got spit on. <laughs> what would you think? <laughs> Since you're the guest. I got spit on multiple times. Okay, so <laughs> I'm sorry. I got it spit happens. on is the title. <laughs> Stanley Cup final preview slash I got spit on. I get emotional <laughs> about Phil Kessel and I get emotional about stupid, stupid decisions. <laughs> yeah. Because I've been a Leaf fan for so long. It's just like ingrained in me that how could you be so stupid? Phil Kessel and stupid decisions. Comes with being a Leafs fan. I know. I'm sorry. One of those things. Actually, that's the new title. Phil Kessel and Stupid Decisions. (laughs) (laughs) All right. See you later, guys. Yes, thank you.